I do beer. I do beer. I do beer. Can go live with the pre-show, Jay. He's already live. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I realized it right as I was looking at my fingers. I was like, mm, mm, mm. Oops. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Oops. I forgot to put the. We have websites. What's up with these websites? <sighs> They're funded by AB and Bev. Oh, uh. I've never seen these websites, so I don't care. Oh, 5 8. It's not bad. What's 5 8? Uh, dirty Little Freak. Oh, the ABV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me look up my beer. I got this beer from the grocery store. I put the link in there. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just saw it, and I don't think I've ever had it. And I wanted something light. Oh, what's my birthday? I'm going to make up a birthday. I'm plenty old enough. I'm old enough times two and then some. Boy, that's depressing. Five noble hops. Four point nine percent. Dang. How many calories? Well, it says one fifty seven calories per serving. What the hell is a serving, assholes? Eight ounces. Oh, this is 12 ounces. Well, they just freaking do the damn bottle. Who's going to drink eight ounces and then leave four ounces? Who? Well, <laughs> nobody. Nobody. Because it's going to go flat. I don't, know if, I don't know if beer has to follow the same serving size as uh, F T A C F not. Something in the food and, food and Drug Administration. Yeah, I don't know. Well, then they should just put per bottle. Because I know well, other should. things. But they should. Yeah, put damn per bottle, assholes. Now I have to do math. And that's not cool. 157 probably plus half of 157, which is like well, 76. I don't, know. I, I don't know if that's what they're counting as a serving. Because usually the smallest serving in beer is 12 ounces. Yeah. Unless you're it's, unless you're in a, a brewery. It's one of those little sifters. Sometimes they'll yeah. do less. I don't like know. Like twelve like the, the like the ten to twelve percent at uh here at Flat Tail, they'll do six ounces. Okay. Which is a super small one. But that is I mean, super like small. freaking ten ounce it's like ten percent to twelve percent, so damn near pointless. Almost not, not like not drinking anything. Yeah, they did that um, the one time when I had um, I think it was the creme brulee or the chocolate in the um, in a gastro pub. They put oh, it yeah. in a they put it in a sifter, but they only filled it like halfway up. I mean, it may not even been halfway. It was like this much, and I was like, 
and that was fourteen dollars. And I was like, goodness. Uh-uh. And at this point, I knew I could yeah, get it at Total Wine. So, yeah. Yeah, if you can get it at Total Wine, for goodness' sake, don't chip people. I know. I just wanted to have it on tap. I never had it on tap. So, I learned my lesson. I was like, ah, never mind. Oh. oh, yeah, we're live. Oh. He's just fixing the description. Okay. My kitty's sitting here. What's going on? Hold on. Okay. We can begin whenever you are ready. I am ready. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Lola Laracy. I am here with the gorgeous and punk rockish sorcerer. And this is Beery Good Entertainment. We are going to do our beer show because that's what we do. We love beer. We do a lot of things, actually. But Yay. beer kind of sets the stage. Beer is like the foundation of our souls. So we would be nothing without it. So we thank beer. But anyway, so we are going to drink some beer and then talk about some beer stories. So to kick us off, Sorcerer Zero, what are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking something that a really good friend sent to me. Oh, Dirty little yes. freak. That's a good one. Dirty little freak. Sounds like a Prince song. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is from Duclaw Brewing. Duclaw Brewing is in Maryland. Okay. And uh, they have a really interesting back history, which I will share as soon as I open this. Drink first, talk later. That's my motto. Now, this is a Dirty Little Freak. Is I, I know we've seen you drink it, but just mm -hmm. as a reminder, this is ale brewed with vanilla beans and natural flavors. Mm -hmm. Woo! Oh, right. is it strong? Woo, right out of the bottle. It's actually, it's not strong. It's actually only 5.8%. But, okay. like, the vanilla is, like, reaching out of the bottle and, like, Isn't going, it nice? Linda, Linda, drink me, drink me. Vanilla, we love vanilla. <laughs> Whoever said vanilla. I love you. Yeah. The nose is going, dirty little freak, I love you too. I see the electricity sparking between the bottle and your nose. Yep, yep. Ooh, pretty brown. That's nice. How much do I have to all of it. No. Change, I can't. Change it, I, I, need to, I need to feed our producer because... Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, our producer is going to love the way this smells. Awesome. Awesome. Oh. Wow. oh, his face. His face is like a study in wow. <laughs> oh, it's nice, isn't it? That's a good one. It's like, well, I love vanilla. <sighs> Mmm. Yep. It's vanilla. It's a little bit thinner than I expected. Nice. I think I remember that too. But it is a brown ale, so I can't uh, I can't tag them on that. That's brown ales are thinner. It's not a stout, so. But it's yeah, so much vanilla, so much vanilla, like. Yeah. Vanilla heaven. Like you could take this in a bathtub and like put it in a wine glass. Uh huh. It'd be great. And you could be like, I don't need any other scents. I just no, need this. No, just the beer and like maybe an Epsom salt bath and like you just sit there and go, it's vanilla heaven. Uh, just, I'm dying now, but before yeah. you dry, die, you have to drink it. I mean, <laughs> make sure before you die in pleasure yep. that you drink the beer. Mm hmm. Now, <clears throat> I actually I looked at uh, I looked at Duclaw's history. Uh huh. Where did it go? Here it is. And it says Dave Benfield, the Grand Poobah of Duclaw Brewing Company, began home brewing beer while in college, presumably for the only reason that guys in college do anything to meet girls. Uh huh. <laughs> Upon graduating, Dave accepted a position in his family's business, but continued to hone his ninja-like brewing skills in secret. Despite his best efforts to brew on the down low, he couldn't hide his obsession from his parents. After all, he was always tired, smelled of spent grain, and mumbled <laughs> incessantly about carboys and original gravities in his sleep. 
Oh my goodness. So instead of staging an intervention, his parents asked, are you thinking about a career change, sweetheart? And he Aww. said, uh, yeah. And after he convinced his mother to stop crying, Aww. his golden retriever-like enthusiasm and Steve Jobs, the envision, won them over. Okay, now that's cool. I thought I thought it was it was pretty. I thought it was a pretty w amusing way to, uh, you know. And it's to, so geeky. It's it like is. such a beer geek thing to do, like whispering it in your sleep, and you know, like a science. Mwahaha, yeah. mad scientist with the beer. <laughs> mad brewing science. Oh dear, did I freeze? Yes, in the best position possible. Oh my god, that's great. I got a screenshot of that. Uh oh. I think we lost our co-host. This isn't good. Oh no! This is very bad. And she's not, yeah, she's not dropping out either. I can't do the beer show by myself. I, I've already done the beer. Oh, oh! There you are! Yay! Why do I always freeze in such weird poses? Well, you're on Wi-Fi, right? Did you see right? how I froze? Yeah, right now I am. Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> but I was such I gotta, a weird I got a pose. screen. I got a screenshot of that. You did? I did. Okay, it's good. awesome. That that needs to be kept forever. Jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I can't move. Help! It's like it's trapped was, inside the screen. It's very um Twin Peaks or something. I'm stuck. Help! Help! <clears throat> All right. Um. Uh, so uh, we talked about Ducla. Is there yeah. anything else you wanted to say about Ducla? Um. Uh. Just um. You know how many cases can can I get of this stuff? It's, it's really it's wonderful. Well, <laughs> I wish Duke Law, for goodness sake, get out here to the West Coast. I like, wish they now. would. They need to go. Just go to West, young sons. Go West. I mean, it works for all the Western people and the Gold Rush people. Well, I, might convince, uh, I might be able to convince Corvallis Brewing Supply to get some in. I'm pretty sure they could figure out a way to get some. I bet they could. You know what? If we had, like, startup money... We could make our own underground shadow beer distribution network. And it would just yeah. be, we, we would hire, you know, people who would drive and they would just go to bottle shops or go to breweries and pick up the stuff and then take it. Wouldn't that be cool? It would be cool. It would be very illegal, but it would be cool. I know. I know. <laughs> Dear whoever regulates that, we're not actually going to do it. We're just we, talking at our butts. Yeah, we could we could start the company and then call it Under the Table Distribution. That would be so obvious. <laughs> that would be incredibly obvious. But we can drink anyone under the table, so if anyone yeah. asks where the name came from. Yeah, exactly. We drink people under the table. And we pay them that way, too, while they're under the table. Here's your money. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any Duclaw beers within 100 miles of me. Oh, that's so sad. They're so good. We seriously, we all need to visit each other. Byron yeah. needs to handle the Northeast. Jason <laughs> and I can handle the Southeast. Cybernaut, Southwest, you Northwest. And we'll just gather up all the beer we can and meet in the middle. Oh, yes. Yes. We can meet in Michigan and then go to all the awesome breweries in Michigan. <laughs> That'd be great. That would be awesome. And then we go, and then we go, we take over Milwaukee. Yep. And, and while we're there, put, uh, it, is it, put, it to, put it to rights. Just put it to rights. Yeah. We're going to make that the beer capital in the United States. I think so. We'll do all the great stuff. I think, isn't Founders from Michigan? Yeah. We'll go to Founders. I think Founders from Michigan, yeah. I think so. I get mixed up a lot, though. All right, so I'm going to drink my beer because I'm thirsty. 
haven't had any beer today. I was in the grocery store yesterday, and I saw this on the single aisle. I don't think I've had it. So, oh, you have singles of the Noble Pills. Oh, my goodness. Yep, and I don't think I've had it, so I got it. And the funny thing is, when I was uh, checking out, it didn't come up on the register. And I was like, oh, why do I have to make everything so hard? Why do I pick the one that doesn't show up? Oh. And so she, she sent the bag boy back to get it. And I'm like, does he even know where it is? I was afraid he was going to go to the refrigerated section. And yeah. I was like, it's 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 on the side, you know, where they have single beers. And I was like, Mate, do you know where it is? And I'm like hollering after him. So I, like three minutes later, he comes back. And it was only $1.99, so that's good. Nice. Founders all day in the in the sixteen ounce cans uh -huh. is a dollar ninety nine here. That's awesome. That is really cool. Let's see if founders can go out there, why can't Duclaw? I mean, I, I there's a difference between Maryland and Michigan, I know, but still, it's not that big of a difference. No, all see, right. it's now see for a, I think for a six pack of that like twelve dollars is pretty expensive. Yeah, I wouldn't get a six pack like that. Yeah. No. But this is because I've never had it, and so I can try it. And it seemed like a good idea because I know it's getting hot here, and so it seemed like a nice light thing to drink. Mm -hmm. So let's see. And it's so bright. I hope you're able to see it well. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's light. Very light-looking golden, light golden. Looks like a pretty classic Pilsner. Oh, yeah, it's, it's clear. Very clear and bubbly. Nice. Definitely bubbly. Very nice. So it's pretty clear, pretty Pilsner looking. Now, if it came out like dark brown or something, I'd be like, what's going on? Nice little head, you know, kind of what you'd expect. And I did sort of like a classic mug that you think mm -hmm. of when you think of beer. This oh, is like yeah. a classic mug. Um, Pilsner. I get the floral. Oh, this smells good. Yeah, I definitely get it. It says it has like five different types of noble hops. Mm -hmm. I definitely get the hops, but a floral type, not not the bitter hops that I don't like so much. It's definitely floral. Oh, it smells very nice. It smells like a garden. Pretty classic Pilsner, what I would think is classic Pilsner. Um, now, where on the where on the bitterness scale is it for you? I would say it's very light in bitterness. Um, I can tell it's hoppy. It's definitely got hops, but it's mild. It's like a hoppy beer for someone who doesn't like hoppy beers or only likes a little bit of hops. Yeah. So it, it's actually perfect for me when it's hot. You know, I don't, I, I don't want a whole lot of stuff going on when it's hot. I just want crisp, refreshing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely got that about it. It's just very light, very minimal, and I love the smell. Now, as far as the floral goes, I don't really taste the floral, but it's not something I would really taste anyway. So the the taste is really just classic hop, very light hop taste. But it smells really good. That looks really good for, you know, a really hot day. How hot is it, Lola? <laughs> it's so hot I didn't go outside. I was going to do the show outside, and then I looked at the weather, and I was like, no, I'm not. Oh, the sweat would be pouring off you at over, what is, over 90 degrees. Yes, I'd be miserable. And the bugs are probably out, and it's bright. I'd be like, no. So this is the closest I got. I have the blinds open. <laughs> All right, and we've got some stories we're going to talk about. Um, do you want to take the first one or the second one? Uh, let's see. I'll take the second one. Okay. So the first one we have is the um, delivery, correct? Yes. San, the okay. San Diego Eater. Okay. So there's a story on the San Diego.eater.com website. That's E A T E R. And it's from May 4th. And it says Hopsy launches growler delivery service of local craft beer. So if you're lazy like I am, you can still get your craft beer. That is so awesome. And they've got a nice picture of here showing the different type of growlers and the different um, um, the different 
um, brands they've got, breweries. They've got Coronado Brewing, which makes sense because this is South um, California. So um, they just opened a retail store and distribu distribution center next to Ballast Point's home in Linda Vista. And oh, it was found in Oak Point. Ballast yes. Point. Yeah, that's a good one. I would love to have that delivered. That'd be awesome. I can't even imagine the price. It's probably super expensive. Um, but if you're living in San Diego, you're used to expensive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's still probably only like half a, a fifth of their, you know, mortgage payment or whatever. Um, so they were founded in San Francisco. I can't talk San Francisco. And they've been delivering from 20 San Francisco Bay, Bay Area breweries throughout California. And they now officially add San Diego. Uh, we've got Benchmark Brewing, Coronado, as I mentioned, Belching Beaver Brewery, which is a great name. I'm a Belching Beaver. Blah. My Cast Brewing, which sounds like an auto dealership. Kensington Brewing and more to be added. And it's, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So they don't actually pour on site, which means they have to go to the breweries to get them. Yeah. Which I, I guess what their, I wonder what their overhead spoilage is like. If they have to go to a brewery to get, but they also offer, you know, like an on-site store of, you know, like some growlers. Yeah. Well, I that makes me wonder about how much their cost is because if they have to go to the store and deliver it from the store, that means somebody has to go to Coronado Brewery and say. Yeah, some guy ordered a growler of blah, blah, and then fill it and then drive it to wherever in California. That's kind of crazy. Now, enable its customers to access small batches of craft beer. Oh, torps. They do have torp canisters for home tap systems. What are torps? Uh, torps are like these little, um, these little two-liter... Um, Two liter containers, and you can attach oh. you can attach a draft hose to it. Oh. And CO2. Okay. So that keeps the beer fresher longer. Okay. Now, who pays for the torp? The distribution company, or I'm assuming there's I'm assuming there's a switch out kind of thing. So you have okay. one, and you give it to them, and they give you the one that's filled. Okay. I'm assuming that, that works. Kind of like how with water, you know, you, you have the big bucket of water and then you give them the empty canister and they give you the new canister. Yeah. Okay. That would be a more, that would be a more cost effective way to do it. Instead of just a growler. Yeah, because I mean that, I mean that's only going to last, what, maybe a week? But then uh, you're even at, you're in a, you know, you're traveling, so that would make it worse, I would think. Well, um, yeah, it has a picture, I think, of the Torp on here. Uh, they're also going to sell 350 and 750 milliliter bottles of barrel aged and sour beers. Um, on site, there will be kombucha and cold brew coffee for customers. Oh, yeah. kombucha is, um, is a fermented, like a vinegar like. Mm. It's fermented, but it, it's very low alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's 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 supposed to be like fruity. I I don't like most of the kombuchas out there because they're just too vinegary for me. That sounds gross. But they'll have that on site for customers to sample via the draft machine. They said their next market will be New York, which doesn't help me at all either because I'm not in New York either. Hey, come well, to New Florida. York is not. New York is not a tiny place. I'm, It'll be interesting not, to figure out they, where in New York. Yeah, I would imagine the city. But, I mean, it may be the whole state because it sounds like with this they do all of California, don't you think? Well, I assume with, uh, I assume with uh, you know, small stores that aren't going to have a whole lot of overhead, it, it would probably work. Okay. I mean, if you only had, if you built up the business, you know, just had um, a few types of things in the store to sell. And they're not pouring in the store, so they're not keeping anything except for closed units. Yeah. 
Um, so, I mean, really the only overhead you have is, you know, the vehicle, gas, insurance, and then you take care of that with the delivery fee. But if you're, if you're lazy enough to not want to go to a place in the delivery area, you can probably afford the delivery fee. Yeah. Um, on their website, um, they give the basic price. Like Third Street Pale Ale, it says ten ninety nine plus a dollar delivery, but there's got to be more to it. A dollar? I mean, I'm sure it's there digital. must be. There must be a minimum order at least for the first couple of times or something. I'm thinking there must be like a flat fee, um, because I mean that I can't imagine someone calling up and for eleven dollars having something delivered to them from San Francisco. That's craziness. I wonder if it would be like a maybe like a subscription thing, like Amazon Prime. You know, you pay a hundred dollars a year or something. I put their website in our Twitch chat. I'm gonna. I'm interested about this. I'm gonna keep looking. Uh, if you want, you can read our next story, and and I'll just keep looking to see if it says more. So, <clears throat> we are BruceDuds.com. Uh, decided to look into the uh, anti-craft beer establishment and they've come up with a list of uh, breweries that are no longer craft. So you no longer have to look at these places in the store and go, hmm, am I really buying craft? All you have to do is look at the list. X, and they describe it as ex-craft breweries who are cut off. Uh, because uh, a lot of people, a lot of people are just cutting out anti-craft, uh, you know, ex-craft breweries off their grocery list altogether. Uh, a few, a few of them that uh, that may seem surprising to some people: um, Kona Brewing, Omission Brewing, uh, Widmere Brothers. Here that. I knew they weren't kind of craft because I'd seen how big they got, uh, but that's that gets kind of surprising because we always mm -hmm. see these, you know, we always see Woodmere here and there, and and we think it's craft. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea who Carbach is. They're in Never Texas. K A R B A C H Carbach. Um, they do Rattlers. I'm wondering if. They're, I'm wondering if they're related to some of the other breweries um, in Texas, like maybe Shiner. So I wonder if Shiner's actually craft or not. Of course, the ones we know about, Elysian, and Ten, Elysian and Ten Barrel are, you know, craft breweries who, who sold out. We heard a lot in the news about them. And it tells it tells you the year that they were acquired uh, and all the labels that are affiliated with the brewery name. Mm -hmm. So this I'm looking I'm I'm trying to find if there's a it'd be nice if they put a Pinterest thing on here that'd be but it's on. It's on wearebrewsteads.com and it's called The Cutoff List of Imposter Craft Beer Brands. And it shows you the websites because apparently there are like marketing websites that they put up to make it look like they're bloggers. And yeah, so watch out for them. Yeah, it's that's a that's that's a pretty nasty tactic. Because there are those mm -hmm. there are those small craft breweries around here who really are struggling with their websites. You know, right. they're, they're you know they're trying to look you know professional and to use that professionalism to you know market yourself as a small brewery. That's to me that's false advertising. Right, and so many people try hard to make a name for themselves, and then you have some website from ABM Bev pretending to be a legitimate blogger. And that kind of sullies the name of all the legitimate, you know, um, bloggers. That's true. I think that there should be a requirement to um, put their, you know, 
their AB affiliation and their logo somewhere, affiliation somewhere, pretty blatant on yeah. the, the front page to show that it's sponsored. It's not, yes. you know, it's not independent. Yes, but I guess it's not regulated like that. Uh, but, it's getting closer, but yeah. we're still dealing with this whole distribution network thing. Mm -hmm. So it can, it's getting pretty painful trying to figure out who's crap, who's not, you know, I agree. Do people really care. Well, and I mean, I know we've all had the discussion before. If it's still good, does it matter? Mm -hmm. it, it does in one sense because I don't want to support practices where, you know, that maybe they're not paying their employees well. Maybe, you know, they, they don't have the same job security that, you know, they may have had when they were independent. Also, I don't like the marketing tactics that we were talking about, especially with the commercials where they knock, you know, craft beer drinkers and basically call us, you know, poop, poop, you know, fancy yeah. people. And so I don't want to support that. So yeah. if I buy their beer, I'm supporting that. So that is that's very true. And I, I really hate the thought that they are purposely attempting to drive small craft breweries who haven't sold out. Right out of the city that they're selling in. That's that to me is a that's a real. Bullish. It's a exactly. It's a mm. bully maneuver. Right, and I don't like it, and I don't support bullies. So I would rather pay ten dollars flat fee if I'm you know in not in San Francisco or San Diego to have growlers delivered to me. I'd yeah. much rather do that. Exactly. Yeah. A I'm dollar. I wonder if Corvallis is going to pick this up, and maybe yes. maybe I should actually suggest it to Munchies. Yes. Which is, uh, now Munchies is our local food delivery service here. Mm -hmm. We actually have it in Tampa, Florida. Too. Mm. Um, I'm going to suggest that they look into the beer delivery thing. I, I'm not sure how the OLCC, which is the Oregon license, uh, mm. Oregon Liquor Licensing Board. Not sure how the OLCC views beer delivery or what regulations surround it, but it would be interesting to find out if Munchies could deliver beer as long as there was an adult there with food. That that'd be awesome, especially with our big hotel going up. That'd be fantastic. Oh, that would be nice. I would love that. Well, with the one we were talking about before, um, the, um, a waiting period because um, if you're outside of their local area, five to seven days. So with that kind of thing, it's not instantaneous. Yeah. But I mean, if they're just talking about Oregon, I mean, if they want to set something up within Oregon, then you know maybe they can get more direct service. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that you know, even just doing Corvallis or just doing Albany, because they're you know we have a generous amount of of decent craft breweries here that they mm -hmm. can go to, grab a growler on their way, and they're delivering all day long. So it wouldn't be any big deal to stop by a brewery, yeah. have a growler, and go. That would be awesome. I don't know why they don't do stuff like that more often, more delivery type services. For beer, well, oh, you know, how time. how we view alcohol is how we view alcohol in the United States is still messed up. So, mm -hmm. getting it delivered is tough. Yeah, it's, uh, I know. Well, there there is a service here. Um, I belong it's its own independent service but it's called Shipped and I pay $15 a month to subscribe to it and then you have to pay extra on top of each delivery but they have grocery uh, groceries delivered to you like within the window of an hour so I added ABC liquor yeah so, grocery, uh -oh. del grocery delivery is awesome Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about just trying out the ABC thing. I just don't know how it worked because, like, y y you never have from day to day. I mean, will it say it has the new Game of Thrones beer? Oh, God, the new Game of Thrones beer came out. 
forgot. Will it have the new games of Th- Game of Thrones beer that this weekend? I might try it this weekend. See if they have the Game of Thrones beer. Yeah, that might I be could good. do a like report on it. Yeah. yeah, I might try it. That'd be hmm. that'd be fantastic. That would be fantastic because I don't have a car, so I don't have any way to get anywhere mm-hmm. if I don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I, if if they deliver on the weekend, I'll be here to sign for it. Yay! Yeah, cause someone. Yay! That sounds like an awesome idea. It'll probably be expensive. Like with a grocery store, um, they overcharge on everything. Because mm-hmm. I didn't notice at first, but my mother noticed it. Because um, she likes these little yogurts that when you go in the store, they're fifty not they're fifty cents each. Well, the service charge her yogurt. And so it's like, wow. And then I started paying attention, and they tack on extra money on everything. That's oh, in yeah. addition to the fourteen. Yeah. So Which is, I'm like, and it's kind of ridiculous. Especially I mean, since I already don't... paid fifteen dollars. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. Now, I mean, some people don't really have a choice. If they're really mm-hmm. stuck at home, they can't go anywhere. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't have a choice. They're gonna have to pay the fee or. Just not eat. Right. And in my case, I don't really have a choice because I started ordering things from Amazon for her. She doesn't understand. Because when I say, Mom, I can get that from Amazon, she says, but that costs so much money. And I said, Mother, I already belong to Amazon. It costs cost zero and she does not get it actually i'm like no it doesn't it costs less than the ship service it's not cost extra so anyways yeah. we, we go through that pretty much every time but yeah i have to patchwork her groceries together between shipped and the um the amazon okay so we had another story didn't we something about founders uh yeah. Founders actually is coming out with their bourbon, a bourbon barrel imperial IPA called Doom. <laughs> Doom, and it's it's actually coming out in both six packs and four packs. Nice. It looks it looks, it looks pretty awesome. I mean, the bottle, the bottle. The label mm-hmm. itself, it has this beautiful uh, swoopy curse, cursive writing on it. And the label is, is you know, the uh-huh. dark steampunk gray and yellow. Oh, nice. Okay. Now, I was thinking, I was thinking that it wasn't actually bourbon barrel aged, but they do have a video on the Founders Brewing site. Oh, yeah. That they do have the barrels, so I guess it is bourbon barrel. How they can put out so much bourbon barrel aged, you know, stuff is, it floors me. It does, because it's got to sit. I mean, you think at least six months, right, that it sits? Yeah, and that takes up a lot of space. They must have a massive um, basement somewhere just for just for all this bourbon barrel stuff. You know, I could be getting mixed up with stories, but I remember a story about one of the breweries, I was thinking it was Founders, that had a mine, an M-I-N-E, that they used to put barrels in. I'm wondering if that was Founders. Maybe it is Founders. Let's see. Let's look what we can find. Well, it certainly Caves looks like a mod. Caves the- of beer. Caves I was of right. Beer. Yes, absolutely. We, that is we both so found cool. the same. That's so funny that we both found the same article. How? How do they? How did they come across that or, or get that? I wonder. That that must have been just a stroke of genius. Ooh, ooh, it's playing. Um, I'm, I guess maybe they found the location and then said, "Hey, this would be great to put our our um, barrels." So maybe yeah, they had the idea. Yeah, it's not temperature controlled. 
you don't have to really put any temperature control in there. Because it's underground. Yeah. And they're already in the Midwest, so it's not going to get super hot like it does here. I really want this video to stop playing. It's pissing me off. Oh. It won't stop. Stop. I want to read your article, but you won't stop. All right. Okay. All right. I just muted it. So Grand Rapids, this is on freep.com, F-R-E-E-P.com. And Grand Rapids, it says it lives in underground caves at least to the publics, to the public. Oh, they're talking about KBS, which we all know about. Interesting. Yep. So I don't know if they put them all down there. And the KBS is a Kentucky bourbon stout, if I remember correctly. It's not the only one using the caves. But it's a great uh -oh. idea. I can't hear you anymore. Oh no. You're breaking, you're breaking up really bad. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking up, breaking up, breaking up, breaking up, breaking up. All right, let me restart. Hold on. Is that any better? That seems better, yeah. Okay, I guess I just need to restart once in a while. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm probably going to end up going back to the office anyway. So I think we pretty much touched on our ideas for this show, right? I believe so. I believe so. We've gone through everything in the in the notes. And uh, I'm down to the last dregs of dirty little free. Good to the last drop. Yes. Not just Mexico House. You Dirty know, little weird. freak. As it warmed up, I kind of, I mm. got a little, like, it almost seemed a little bourbon-y. I think that's okay. probably the, 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 you know, maybe they stored the vanilla in, in bourbon or something. Okay. That would make sense. Well, and if they used vanilla um, extract, doesn't that kind of have alcohol yeah, in it? Vanilla bourbon, extract? Bourbon, extra bourbon extracted vanilla, yeah, that would be bourbon-y. So that would put, could be part of where the extreme flavor comes from. Mm -hmm. All right, well, everybody, uh, we've had a great show. We've talked about beer, our favorite subject. And um, for Beery Good Entertainment, my name is Lola Laracy. You can find me anywhere. Just type in Lola Laracy. I'm all over the place. And Linda, a.k.a. Sources Zero, where can we find you? Anywhere you can type the S-Zero-R-C-E-R-E-S-S. -S -S Zero. You can find me. You can find me on uh, Google Plus, Facebook, here on Twitch, YouTube. Yell at me across the miles. Find me in a beer store. <laughs> and if we're drunk, you know what? We may just shrug our shoulders and be like, you know what? We're happy anyways. We don't care what people think. <laughs> some some video is trying to play again for me. I don't know what it is. But I also, which is goodvibes.com, you can look at our show notes to find the link to help us out. Stop playing. So I'm going to sign off. How does that sound? Good idea. We'll be back in just a little <laughs> bit with, the, with the, our politics and controversy. <laughs> it's playing against. It's not bad.